Hola qué tal amigos, bienvenidos a Desierto Cósmico y este video un poco especial ya que eh, hoy es la última noche que vamos a realizar astrofotografía con nuestro amigo Martin y compartirle esta vez eh, una pequeña entrevista con él ya para conocerlos un poco más y que nos cuente realmente eh, qué le pareció esta visita acá a la finca cósmica bueno la entrevista será en inglés porque Martin no habla español pero podrán activar los subtítulos cierto en youtube entonces muchachos eh, eh, so Martin I was talking to the people of the cierto cósmico that uh, this is the last night that we are here in, at the finca cósmica and maybe it's good for for me and for them to know what your what your feelings are after this almost a month here in the finca cósmica and uh, maybe know something um, some things about you mm -hmm. so um, you want to start you want to uh, oh. maybe present yourself how much time have you been in astrophotography how you got interest in astronomy and and that and, uh, thanks oh well, i my interest in astronomy began when i was about eight years of age when my father used to take my brother and myself to a church service at night and we used to look up at the sky and I asked him what were the points in the mm. sky and he told me they were the stars and that was the that was the start of a lifelong romance with astronomy. My interest in astrophotography probably was launched about 40 years ago and uh, in more recent times I've had the opportunity to travel to Uh, the Pyrenees in France and to the Pic de Midi Observatory to take part in um, astrophotography and astroimaging and I've also been to the Alps for the same purpose but my uh, lifelong ambition probably was to come to somewhere where the skies were always clear and dark and transparent but I didn't know That place was Chile until about seven or eight years ago. So that became the focus of my um, my energies to come to Chile. And I must say I haven't been disappointed at all. At the end of this seven weeks, I'm, I would have to be honest and say that I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. But I'm also exhilarated. And I'm fascinated by the, the glory of the, the night sky. Certainly from this part of Chile, it's outstanding spectacular great so you started uh, astrophotography 40 years ago wow. that means very different from what we have now <coughs> with oh, yeah. probably with film a film uh, yes and of course with film it's a, a hit and miss mm -hmm. activity because you can't always be sure that your um, your camera lens is in focus uh, you can't be certain whether you have exposed For the correct length of time or whether you have underexposed or overexposed and um, you, you don't know either at that stage whether your tracking is um, what it should be in order to record uh, the white field uh, panoramas which I intended to do so yeah it was certainly much more of a challenge uh, using film and uh, Uh, no doubt that once the uh, the digital revolution came along, well, almost everyone became a professional photographer in some sense. And at the same time, it also made life easy for those of us who engage in astrophotography. Mm -hmm. So it made a big difference, no doubt about that. Great. So, and um, uh, astrophotography always like in deep, deep space, astrophotography? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, landscape astrophotography doesn't really appeal to me to a large extent because mm -hmm. you're dealing with much the same um, the subject matter. Okay, the, the landscape might change, but essentially mm -hmm. it is landscape. And it's nice to have a backdrop of the Milky Way, if the Milky Way is suitably placed in your night sky. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the wide, wide field astrophotography and um, deep astrophotography is much more of a challenge. And really, that's my principal area of interest. interest. And that mm -hmm. certainly has been satisfied out here. Mm -hmm. 
over this last seven weeks? It's like more the same for me because I do uh, landscape astrophotography, but for um, uh, recording things, show the people the sky, but not really like like uh, like an entire discipline. So, uh, did you mention that uh, you were not aware of Chile? Uh, I mean, ten years ago. Oh, ten years ago, <clears throat> never crossed my mind that the the darkest, clearest most transparent skies were in Chile. No, I thought perhaps mm. South Africa, Australia. And I think it was whenever I became aware of the European Southern Observatory mm -hmm. and its, um, its facilities at Paranal, that I watched a number of their video presentations and it brought home to me just what a jewel uh, Chile is for astrophotography. Mm -hmm. And so, how about this trip? How it came to your mind? How, when, or when you say, I have to go to Chile, I, I, I want to go to Chile. Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to, to visit Chile, but it was, it's quite, quite a challenge, particularly when you're traveling from the British Isles. Mm -hmm. It's over 7,000 miles, or what's that in kilometers? Is it about... Um, 13,000 13, kilometers yes, probably uh, you, you're you're taking a lot of gear with you mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's, it's it's a challenge uh, to, to to undertake that but I was determined to do that and initially I was going to use the services of a travel agency or a travel company to um, to help me but I soon realized that they were quite limited in what they could do for me in regards to putting me in touch with someone who had knowledge of astrophotography in Chile. And uh, I think that became very important for me. So uh, eventually I was able to um, get a contact who recommended yourself, me. Carlos. And uh, the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> so uh, we've had a very, very uh, entertaining and a very worthwhile seven weeks where we've had lots lots of clear skies more than I anticipated <laughs> and that actually explains why I'm here seven weeks <laughs> perhaps three weeks maybe four at, at a maximum had I known the skies were so good but uh, I have no regrets no regrets great no. so because you you were telling me that you wanted to come seven weeks because of your experience <coughs> in another uh, astrophotography destinations well, yeah, that you yeah most of my astrophotography in Europe has been plagued by the fact that you do not have reliable clear skies um, it's very difficult to get a continuum uh, a series of clear skies at night let's say over a week that's mm -hmm. very difficult to find in Europe and certainly in the UK it's all but impossible so I was very much that was very much at the back of my mind not realizing that uh, the skies here are clear almost all the time <laughs> but when we were talking I told you that but you, did. you <laughs> didn't believe me <laughs> no I, I was uh, I was hesitant I was mm. reluctant to believe that I hedged yes. my bets and yes. that's why I decided to come for seven weeks Mm -hmm. So seven weeks later, here I am. This is the the last sunset yes. Yes. that I, well, from the think I will view um, from here, and uh, each night the the mm -hmm. sky continues to entrance me. Fantastic. Yes. Yes. Great. Thanks. So uh, talking about the sky, now that, now that you mentioned, um, what are your more memor memorable memories? Um, or what it's more like the most impactful thing that you that you uh, watch in the sky I mean not watch but th that you can extract from the sky here in Chile well I would say first and foremost the it was the 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 impression of the Milky Way it just strikes you it's like clouds as they would appear to me at home Sometimes I would look up and I would think, oh, the clouds have appeared, but they hadn't. It was the, it was the star clouds of the Milky Way. 
the two Magellanic clouds, which of course are invisible from uh, the north, well, most of the northern hemisphere, uh, were a treat to also observe, uh, as was the Carina Nebula, the, um, the Southern Cross, which is really iconic of much mm. of uh, the, the southern hemisphere, and uh, the, um, the Cold Sack. Uh, well, so, and of course, uh, the, the straggling constellation of uh, Scorpius. Mm -hmm. The entire constellation, we only see a very small portion. Antares only appears about 5 or 10 degrees above our horizon, and at that only for a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I must say also that you have a very um, high um, eyesight for for the night sky, because after we spend some weeks in here, you are starting to tell me, oh, this night is better than the 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 last <coughs> night. The transparency is better. The seeing is a, yeah, little, a little, yeah, little better. Yeah, yeah, You're starting to to differentiate very much so. some uh, better nights, better nights from yeah. other. I mean, not not bad nights. Not bad, but, but I mean, I can't do that in Europe. No. In Europe, if you get a clear sky, you just take it. Uh, whether mm -hmm. the scene is good, bad, or indifferent, mm -hmm. uh, and frequently you've got clouds also playing a part in your night sky as you well. You don't have night sky to differentiate. No, one no, the you other. can't afford to differentiate <laughs> the night sky in Europe. Mm -hmm. Can't, not really, no. But out here, I could and did, but yes. at the same time, it didn't stop me from imaging mm -hmm. uh, each of the nights we had uh, clear skies. Yes, yeah. And I remember also one one. <coughs> little um, fun, I would say fun fact that happened one night that we have some very high clouds and uh, you were you were trying to take images and try to take yeah, images yeah. because and I say to you Martin don't worry because we have we will have another we'll have another night another and another and another, another clear night but you told me that that is more like you in that's in that's Ireland. how it is in Ireland mm -hmm. uh, where I live um, mm -hmm. the, the the opportunity for imaging the sky is very limited, mm -hmm. and any time you get, you use it. You use it. You use no it matter if no matter. And I brought that <laughs> same uh, mindset <laughs> to my, my 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 visit here to mm -hmm. to, to Chile. I, I said to you, go to rest, go to yeah. uh, pick up an energy for <clears throat> another for another night, another night. That mm. for sure we have clear nights. Yeah. So. Uh, relating to the to the first video that you appeared, um, you tell me well about the the colors, yes, of the, oh, yeah. the of sunset. the sunset mm. that you rarely get that in Ireland because mm. of the of the clouds. The cloud. Also about the uh, well the Milky Way casting shadows. Yeah, uh, I show you that. Yes, yes, yes that was uh, that was remarkable. <laughs> yes, and uh, but we didn't get the chance because we only have one week her here at the Finca about mm -hmm. the the frequency of the clear skies. Well, that really um, that really did surprise me. Uh, shock. Mm -hmm. Well, well, no, I, I can't say shock. It, it certainly <laughs> uh, it surprised me that um, of the twenty eight nights that we had mm -hmm. for imaging, I think four were. Um, let's say impacted upon by high altitude cloud or fog, um, mm -hmm. that represents a very very high um, frequency of uh, clear skies. That's probably on a par with the uh, Paranel. Mm -hmm. more. That's about 84, 85, percent. 85, 86 percent frequency of clear skies yes. at night. Just wish I could get something like that in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Not likely. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because I, when we talk, I, I told you that in here we don't have trees, we don't have grass growing because of the dry weather and the lack of rain and that the very low humidity. The, the, also, you mentioned that yeah, um, um, you are used to humidities about eighty to one hundred to one hundred percent, and yes. uh, in the winter, winter time for us, that will cause condensation on camera lenses and on optics mm -hmm. of some telescopes. Um, and of course it can be militated to some extent with uh, mm -hmm. uh, dew heaters, but um, it is an issue and it's a problem, which I didn't experience here at all. Mm -hmm. You were a little bit surprised by the low humidity, oh, the humidity. is around yeah. 
average 10 to 10, 20%. percent 20 percent usually yeah. we had one only one night with 70 80 percent yeah yes, that's that the was night impacted for with the fog rolled in for a few hours mm -hmm. and yes. then it dissipated yes. sometime after midnight but so that, that I, I, I don't think we could say we had actually a complete night that was uh, let's say ruined by cloud no, fog no, because it, 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 it some of the nights it begin clear and then high clouds roll in yeah. and the other nights it starts with high clouds and then, and then it just it clears. clears. Yes. Beautiful. So you mentioned also in the first video that you appeared uh, about the Magellanic clouds. Yes. Yes. And also you told me that well those objects uh, from Scorpio to the south you only have seen through books or magazines. Mm -hmm. You told me something about the Magellanic clouds also that they have they appear for for northern people they appear to be brighter or they you well, think it, where they yeah, were brighter they, i mean if you read the literature if you read mm -hmm. popular books on astronomy the impression is given that um, they are bright mm -hmm. uh, as bright as parts of the milky way but they're not they're actually quite faint yes. and uh, sometimes i find that they're best viewed with a little bit of averted vision mm -hmm. yes yeah. for sure yeah yes. but that i'm not complaining <laughs> the southern, the southern hemisphere has the, the um, has has all the, the the beauties of the night sky more so than the northern hemisphere. So I'm not complaining. No, no, no. But you saw that they were brighter. Oh yes, yeah. yes, yeah. You you told me one of the first night. Oh, they are very dim. They're very oh, faint. Oh, oh. And yes, I told you that you can only see it from dark skies. I think Porter Tree. And We have in here a 12 wind of Sonian for people that come to the Finca Cosmica can watch through. You look the Jewelry Box, you look uh, Trifid Nebula, yes, Omega Centaurus. Yes. Je uh, last night we saw a Tarantula. Yes. We saw it with what, uh, what are you two different fields of view. Mm -hmm. And uh, the wider field of view was, well, both of them were spectacular. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I mean, the sky is so dark and so transparent, they, they almost appear three-dimensional. That's the way I would describe them. Mm -hmm. And that's something I don't think you're going to get with a, a visual telescope in the Northern Hemisphere, unless, of course, you're looking at, say, the moon or one of the brighter mm -hmm. planets. And, of course, I've also had the opportunity to, to image on a wide scale, or, or yeah, on a wide field um, basis, I think three, three of the planets, no, four of the planets that are currently mm -hmm. in the night sky. Oh yes, yeah, we yes. had Mercury, Mercury Mars, in the in the evening. Yeah, and we had Jupiter and Saturn. Saturn and Jupiter, and then the only one I didn't uh, image yet was um, Venus. Venus. <laughs> Venus, it's too late. <laughs> too I mean, too late or too early in the morning. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. I must, I must say that uh, the weather has been very, very has been very cold yeah. so uh, martin usually go to bed uh, early <laughs> well <laughs> between 1 1 a.m and 2 a.m <laughs> yes because uh, that's something to learn also because the first night we we stay up until three i i went up to still four maybe the first yeah. night mm. and then i was wrecked yeah. <laughs> the next day yeah. i was wrecked so then uh, we decided that as we are going to be a lot of time we don't have to be necessarily too late in, no uh, up until too late in the night so another thing that uh, i have to um, to make a point is that um you mentioned about your first uh, glimpse of visit to chile about a travel travel agency yes mm -hmm. But that is, um, but that is very different from what we are doing right now. Because um, other way it will be almost impossible to take wide field oh. pictures, and and using deep sky rigs. No, I think the lesson the lesson learned mm -hmm. is that you do need to have a contact. You need to have knowledge of someone who's local to to Chile, who has. Um, a detailed knowledge of astronomy and uh, astro imaging because uh, I mean I could not have achieved any of this without your input without you 
carrying out the essential task of polar aligning the the equipment each night. I mean, I couldn't mm. have uh, I couldn't have carried that out coming from the northern hemisphere where we're spoiled with having a bright star or a relatively mm-hmm. bright star close to the the mm. celestial pole, the north celestial pole. Because in that trip you are going to stay in a city and drive to the yeah, desert and take that's only what I wide angle, to do only wide ago. angle pictures. Yeah, yes. but and that that just would not have happened. So thankful that things worked out mm-hmm. in the way that they did, and I think I'm going back to Ireland hopefully with between five and six hundred gigabytes of uh, data. I think more close to a terabyte of data. Well, yes, you know better because <laughs> yes. we still have to add in uh, data yes. from from other from other yes. Uh, equipment. Yes, we have like six hundred gigs uh, with the wide field mm-hmm. angle cameras and the DSLRs, but it's still missing the uh, the dedicated. Uh, yes, right. Uh, the, yes. the telescopic yeah, uh, telescopic images. Yes. So yeah, maybe, so, yeah, maybe a, yes. a terabyte. Yeah, that's, yes. that's that sounds about right. Yeah. That's that's value so, for money. <laughs> for me anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe not for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So after these seven weeks, Martin, also um, what's your impression about uh, the country, Chile? Not apart from the sky and the the telescopes and the astrophotography. Um I mean what impression do you have about the about the people? Well, okay, starting mm-hmm. with the people, I find the people very friendly. Mm-hmm. Very generous. Um, I find that they are very keen to know people from other countries and about their their culture. Mm-hmm. Um, I was fascinated by the landscape. Uh, everywhere you travel in Chile, certainly in the north, you have mountains, you have the Andes, um, you have well, essentially desert. In, in much of northern uh, Chile, which is for me fascinating to to uh, to, to look at and to experience, mm-hmm. and um, the food, yeah, food is like food from home in Ireland. Uh, the wine, the wine, yes, <laughs> yes, the wine. <laughs> I've had some very good red wines from mm-hmm. Chile, and um, very nice. It's just unfortunate that. Um, my suitcases will not facilitate a few bottles of wine <laughs> for myself going home, but can't have everything. I'll settle for a terabyte of uh, data mm-hmm. of you're, astronomical you're, images. You're taking a, almost a terabyte of data, yeah, yes, yeah. of astronomical images. Anything else you want to, to say, Martin? Uh, with no question? <laughs> no questions. Uh-huh. Well, the seven weeks have passed much more quickly than I anticipated. Um, the highlight for me was getting the opportunity to go to a really dark sky. The threshold, Bortle 1, Bortle 2. Carlos thinks it's Bortle 2, but mm, I'd be inclined to think <laughs> that it's perhaps on the threshold of 1. And, uh, and I'm just looking now at the sunset, and I'm mm-hmm. looking at the subtle colours mm-hmm. that are being displayed in the sky. And uh, they will be memories that I'll take back to Ireland with me and treasure. It's been a fascinating experience. Chile is a vast country. Um, and its potential for uh, astrotourism has yet to be fully exploited. And I think it's time the Chilean government were prepared to put more resources, more money into the development of that. And that, mm-hmm. that, despite the fact that I know that most of the, the world's principal uh, optical observatories are now based in Chile, but I think there's still so much to be achieved uh, with, with, with the, uh, the quality of the skies out here. And protect the skies, protect them for future generations. Because in Europe, certainly in the big cities in Europe, um, no one really has seen the, the Milky Way. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. only strikes you when you come out here. The, the clarity of the Milky Way. It's it's awesome. It's unbelievable. Great. Okay. Great. Thanks. So, um, well, thanks to 
Martin, guys, mm. to to well, this little interview about how has been his trip to Chile and some some thoughts and also some advice from who wants to come to Chile to do astrophotography mm. watching from outside. Yes. Yeah. And and also for the viewers of Desierto Cosmico. Uh, I want to say some words because uh, this trip is also very special for me because uh, Dr. Takahashi that you see over there, uh, the ex-owner of Dr. Takahashi, it's me. This, <laughs> this gentleman over here that kindly agreed to, um, <clears throat> to exchange his Takahashi, his beloved Takahashi, uh, for, for this expedition. Uh, and he say with these words, uh, and and I might be very emotional about this, but he say in his work uh, he prefers to to uh, so he prefers to that Takahashi ends on my hands here in Chile. And, uh, I will be putting a uh, very good use than he's selling it in in Europe, and probably he will get uh, more money for that Takahashi selling in Europe. But he kindly decided mm. to that Takahashi ends in Chile in, in my hands. So I will be thankful, I think, for life, for... Forever in my death. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank yes. you. Thank you, Marty. And I am... And I am also very happy because I feel your... Um, that this trip is what you expected, and even more. Is, yeah, yes. Yeah. It's and everything and more, yeah. Yes, it is. Everything and more. So no complaints. <laughs> can I take these guys back to Ireland with me? <laughs> can you put it in your suitcase? <laughs> can I put them in the suitcase? <laughs> wow. Look so, so, um, so, bueno, muchachos, eh, compartirle en este video eh, eso, bueno, un video un poco distinto, pero creo que es de tremenda importancia, eh, bueno, para mí, la visita de Martin acá y para el desarrollo de, de, de la finca cósmica. Eh, so, eh, we are seeing you next time, and bye bye. Chao, chao. Chao, chao. Ya nos quedamos.